Welcome back to another Hitchrax feature series. Today, we're going to dive into a new addition to your system, which is biomechanics reporting. So you're familiar, hopefully, with biomechanics that's been out for about a year now, um, able to analyze these swings and look at the movement of particular body parts, shoulders, pelvis, head movement, stride length, things like that. Um, now, what we're adding is the ability to look at that data collected over time. So you'll see reports is now active on your system here. You can still do live recordings. You can go back and review specific videos. Uh, and if we go into reports, you'll see we have our database of players. I can go to, for this example, my colleague Elena, who has some good information on this system, and hit continue. All right, so biomechanics reporting is going to take a collection of information from whatever time frame you select. In the very top of the screen here, it says session range. I can hit this little icon, uh, the pencil tool there, and you'll see I have a drop down to choose to look at the data, uh, biomechanic data specifically, from whatever range I want. The past week, month, three months, six months, 12 months, or you can pick your own range if you have a certain window that you're working with a player on and you want to indicate uh, patterns or differences in movement throughout that duration. Okay, so we'll leave this on the past six months for now. We'll bring that up. And on the right side, we have our categories that you can choose to analyze from. So we can hit our second drop down tab over here and you'll see some of those categories that you're used to looking at. We've got head movement, shoulder velocity, torso bend, arm velocity, pelvis velocity, uh, the feet, shoulders versus pelvis, and then your center of mass, of course. So we'll go to head movement. When that information pops up, you now have the ability to look at head movement from heel strike to point of impact, both the horizontal and the vertical movement of the head. So, you know, typically in a swing after heel strike, the body has hopefully stopped moving drastically forward or up and down and the swing becomes rotational. So the head really should remain still. So at heel strike, hopefully that head's remaining still and we can take a look at the horizontal movement of the head from heel strike to point of impact by exit velocity or by launch angle. So if I take a look at the horizontal movement of the head versus the exit velocity, I can start to see a pretty interesting chart here. This yellow line on every category is going to be the average exit velo, or if you select launch angle, your average launch angle. All right, exit velo is on the vertical axis and the biomechanic data is on the bottom horizontal axis this is head movement in inches, one inch, two inch, three inch, etc. So what we can see just from this information, and every hitter is different, every way that people move is different. So this data is not going to be, you know, a one piece puzzle for everybody, but we can start to find some patterns and see things that work for certain players. In this example, you know, this is kind of what I'd expect with Elena. When her head moves, again, from heel strike to point of impact, between zero and one inch, less than one inch, her exit velo is the highest up here at 69 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour on average. That holds true for one to two inches of movement. And as we start to get past two inches, we look at three, four, five, six inches of horizontal movement after heel strike, you start to see her exit velocity decline. Okay, that's information that I would really expect, um, but now you can help quantify and show a player after this point, this is the drop off that you see. Here is why we're teaching you to do X. Okay, so that's head movement. And if I go back, uh, you also have the vertical movement of the head as well as the resultant, which is the movement from heel strike to point of impact specifically um, combined. So you actually can see the, uh, the graph showing, you know, both the vertical and the horizontal movement uh, of the head. Okay. Take a look at another category here. For example, if we take a look at, uh, let's take a look at uh, the feet and we can look at stride length. This is one that, you know, we've had a few customers that have been testing this already start to bring up some trends that they've seen on. We can look at stride length by exit velocity and select that here and actually start to see, okay, you know, what is your average stride length? You know, when your stride is six inches longer, when your stride is you know, a couple inches shorter, is that making a drastic change to what you're doing? 
that kind of goes back to the discussion of, you know, should you widen out your stance, widen out your stance with a short stride or standing upright and getting more vertical movement. Again, this depends on the hitter, depends on their body, depends on how they move um, and how they perform. This chart, again, if I'm just looking at this from a quick glance here, it shows in general, I start to see between eight to 12 inches in stride length for Elena, a little bit of an increase here. So you might start to see uh, a trend line that looks something like this. Maybe a shorter stride length for her starts to dip off a little bit. And in general, a longer stride length starts to dip off as well, still below her average velo there. Um, it looks like, I, I do know there are a couple outliers here from a drill she was doing. Um, I think it was, uh, you know, it was a drill where she started with her feet completely together and, and strided uh, to feel that uh, horizontal movement. So be careful of the data you're looking at. Be careful of the hits you upload um, and make sure, you know, make sure this fits with what you want to look at. It's very, very important to keep that clean. Um, I know, you know, this on a, a 24 to 28 inch stride is not something that Elaine is going to do in the game. So I can tell you immediately those are outliers. Um, so you get some good information here. You can start to get a visual package of what she's doing with her body and what the cause off the bat is. Okay, what the result off the bat is there. So let's take a look at another example. Uh -huh, let's go back. And let's take a look at the center of mass. This is another big one. It's, it's again, quantifying something that coaches have talked about for a long time. From your load, you know, when you're coiling, when you're working back to heel strike in your stride phase, your body is very likely going to have some vertical movement toward the pitcher. After your heel hits the ground, that vertical movement should really cease and hopefully become pretty stagnant, maybe even possibly coming backward a little bit uh, to create space for the hands to come through. And that body just starts to rotate around its axis. So we can take a look at the stride phase. Uh, sorry, let me go back. We can take a look at um, Elena's center of mass and we can look at her movement in the stride phase from load to heel strike, or we can look at it from the swing phase, from heel strike to point of impact. All right, so you can indicate, you know, what part of the swing do you want to look at, which will change the type of information you're looking for. So let's look at her swing phase from heel strike to contact, and let's look at that by launch angle this time. Okay, so if we look at this again, we have her launch angle here on the vertical axis and her uh, center of mass movement in inches on the bottom axis. <clears throat> and I think this is also pretty telling here. What we can see is after heel strike, from heel strike to point of impact, when her center of mass only moves between one and two inches, we see her average launch angle is at maybe 19, 20 degrees. As that center of mass movement increases after heel strike, call it two, three, four, five inches, you start to see the launch angle flatten out quite a bit. And if we just, if we think about that here logically, that, that could potentially mean after heel strike, her body is lunging forward. Maybe she's out in front of the ball. Um, maybe the hands are still caught behind the swing working down and, and she's just not able to effectively deliver the barrel. And I know Elena can hit the ball in the gap and over the fence. So, a 19 degree launch angle is probably pretty close to what she's shooting for. She is not shooting for something around nine degrees because she can, uh, she can really swing it and put the ball over the fence. So here's just a couple of examples of how you can use this information to start to really quantify significant patterns um, and see how certain movements of players may affect the result off the bat. And I think that's the core reason for adding this biomechanic you know, data to the system is to pair pre-contact and post-contact data. We can see you know, what is the cause and what is the result. There is not gonna be a one size fits all for this information. If you need to learn about the stats, we have some info here to give you some, uh, some graphics. We've done some webinars um, on some of this information as well too that we recommend checking out. And hopefully you're able to find some things that help your hitters and maybe discover something new um, that the industry has not recognized or isn't talking about.
That's biomechanics uh, reporting. That is live on your HitTrack system now with the latest software update. We hope you guys have fun testing that out.